Today I continue the story from where I left off in my uh, previous presentation on Murphy efficiencies. Just a short recap. We consider a distillation tray with uh, a vapor composition YE entering the uh, tray and the composition of uh, vapor Y sub L leaving the tray. We can uh, define the component Murphy efficiency as the uh, difference in the composition between the vapor leaving the tray and the vapor entering the tray, tray divided by the uh, composition change that can be uh, achieved if the uh, vapor leaving the tray were to be in thermodynamic equilibrium with the liquid leaving the tray. So um, physically, the Murphy efficiency is the actual accomplished change in vapor composition divided by the potential change in the vapor composition on the conditions in which the uh, distillation tray operates under thermodynamic equilibrium conditions. For a binary mixture, since the um, mole fractions add to unity, the Murphy component efficiency of component one must equal that of component two. This equality is no longer required for mixtures containing three or more components. For a ternary mixture, for example, the three component efficiencies may differ from one another. Theoretically also, for a ternary um, mixture or a quaternary mixture, there is no requirement that the uh, component efficiencies be bounded. In other words, uh, lie between zero and unity. In this presentation, I would like to demonstrate, firstly, that uh, the component Murphy efficiencies for multi-component distillation are indeed unbounded and can have uh, component efficiencies greater than unity or less than zero. Secondly, I'd like to uh, explore the uh, Murphy efficiency concept for liquid-liquid extraction and also demonstrate the unboundedness of the Murphy component efficiencies. Thirdly and finally, I'd like to uh, take a sideways look at uh, transient adsorption of binary mixtures in a zeolite and demonstrate that uh, the component Murphy efficiencies may indeed exceed unity for kinetic separations. Let's uh, begin uh, the uh, story by recapping what uh, we achieved in our previous presentation. In my uh, previous presentation, I had analyzed the experiments of Martin Springer carried out in a uh, distillation column under total reflux conditions for the ternary mixture of water, ethanol and acetone. Um, the experimental data of Springer shows that the uh, distillation boundary shown by the thick black line may be crossed. Here we show the compositions of the 11 trays in blue, ranging from the reboiler to the condenser. If the uh, 
trays were to operate under equilibrium conditions, the composition trajectories must follow the residue curve maps shown in pink. And no boundary crossing is allowed if the uh, stages were to operate under thermodynamic equilibrium conditions. The actual conditions, we note that the as we move um, up the column from the reboiler to the condenser, the uh, compositions cross the distillation boundary. To explain and rationalize the boundary crossing effect, we had uh, set up a simple model for the distillation uh, tray in the uh, Springer experiments. The bubble of bubble froth regime is described by bubbles of uniform size of four and a half millimeters rising at, at a velocity of 20 centimeters per second leading to a uh, vapor liquid contact time of 46 milliseconds in the uh, froth height which is estimated to be 9.2 millimeters. Using the uh, maxwell stefan uh, diffusion equations for uh, ternary gas mixtures, the uh, Geddes equation represented here, which represents the unaccomplished change divided by the potential change. Indeed, uh, the Murphy efficiency is 1 minus this quantity. This can be solved, can be even solved analytically, can be solved numerically for the bubble, like, uh, bubble dispersion on the tray and uh, the composition trajectory followed during the equilibration process as the vapor traverses the height of the dispersion froth, froth can be calculated. The uh, maxwell stefan uh, model calculations for a typical tray with a feed composition entering the tray somewhere here. And this is a blown up diagram showing the uh, compositions. This is the entering vapor composition. The uh, maxwell stefan um, model calculations are shown in blue as it uh, traverses the tray. For a contact time of 46 milliseconds, the uh, compositions have uh, attained or achieved boundary crossing. If the tray dispersion height were to be tall enough such that the vapor bubbles could equilibrate, then the compositions would get back to the position shown here and no boundary crossing would be uh, observed. In other words, the maxwell stefan model anticipates a scenic route to equilibration and since the uh, Equilibration is stopped before thermodynamic equilibrium can be achieved. We have uh, the phenomena of boundary crossing. We can determine the component efficiencies of each of the three components and we note that the efficiency of water is uh, significantly larger than the efficiencies of ethanol and acetone. And the differences in the component efficiencies drive the compositions during the uh, equilibration trajectory away from the uh, path dictated by the residue curve maps shown in, uh, in pink.
So put another way, differences in the component efficiencies cause boundary crossing. That was the conclusion drawn in my previous presentation. Let us examine now another set of experiments um, carried out uh, by Springer in his uh, PhD dissertation. This is for a quaternary mixture of water, ethanol, methanol and acetone. The experimental data are plotted uh, in using these blue circles in ternary composition space where the compositions of methanol and acetone are combined. This is the distillation boundary and again we note that the uh, experiments show the phenomena of boundary crossing And the acetone boundary has been uh, crossed. If we take a vapor composition entering the tray somewhere here in one of the stages, and um, the Geddes model combined with the Maxwell Stefan diffusion equations, the transient equilibration trajectory followed it by the vapor bubbles are shown by the blue lines that indicate boundary crossing phenomena. Um, and we note again that rather than follow a straight line pass, the equilibration trajectory is curvilinear. And the component efficiencies are calculated uh, from the uh, simulated uh, trajectories and the component efficiency for methanol for a range of uh, 48 times exceeds unity. So we have uh, the demonstration of the unboundedness of the uh, Murphy component efficiencies. One of the components components may have efficiencies exceeding unity. And um, this deviation of uh, the component efficiency from unity values contributes to uh, the boundary crossing for this uh, quaternary mixture. Moving on to uh, the ternary mixture of water, ethanol, tertiary butanol, um, this is a uh, system also with uh, a distillation boundary and uh, these are the uh, calculations using the maxwell stefan Geddes model starting with a vapor composition entering the tray. The blue line shows the uh, equilibration trajectory as it rises to the, uh, through the uh, dispersion froths. And uh, as to the, is to be expected, the trage equilibration trajectory follows the scenic route to equilibrium and not the straight line path. And uh, the component efficiencies calculated on the basis of the equilibration trajectory are shown here. And particularly noteworthy is that the efficiency of tertiary butanol is negative for a uh, range of uh, contact times. The negative efficiency of tertiary butanol has been uh, experimentally confirmed in this uh, paper published in 1977, carried out in the uh, separations process group of uh, George Standard at the University of Manchester. For interested readers, you may also wish to read this paper on um, 
studies in distillation number five in chemical engineering science in 1965 that uh, lays out the standout efficiency as a more thermodynamically precise definition of the Murphy component efficiencies. This paper is of uh, historical importance and uh, we'll encounter the name of standard once again further down the road when we uh, discuss liquid-liquid extraction. The message from this uh, work is that uh, negative efficiencies are possible and and uh, can be uh, routinely calculated using the uh, maxwell stefan diffusion equations along with a mass transfer model such as uh, for bubble bubble dispersions and the uh, Geddes equilibration trajectory. Let's uh, move on to liquid-liquid extraction. And we draw a precisely analogous picture for mass transfer in, um, in the sieve tray column in which uh, the uh, rising droplets of liquid are contacted with the continuous phase. Generally speaking, mass transfer resistances are present in both the dispersed phase and the continuous phase and both these resistances can be routinely accounted for. Um, just uh, to be uh, consistent, we apply um, the uh, Geddes model to describe the equilibration within the droplets. Uh, we could use the Kronig-Brink um, model, um, but the uh, results uh, would be almost exactly the same and the uh, same kind of uh, uh, effects are observed albeit at a different Fourier time. We examine mass transfer in the uh, extraction of a mixture of propyl benzene and tetradecane using the solvent NMP. The feed mixture is a 50-50 mixture of uh, propyl benzene and tetradecane, shown here. This is contacted with the solvent NMP on a uh, sieve tray column. If we join this point with this uh, NMP at, uh, at this position here, the mixture composition ends up in the two-phase region. This will equilibrate along the tie line shown by uh, this uh, yellow line. And uh, we examine mass transfer in the uh, raffinate phase as it moves um, up the column in the form of uh, uniform droplets of liquid. Using the Geddes model for equilibration and the maxwell stefan diffusion equations for this ternary mixture, we can calculate the uh, equilibration trajectory the liquid droplets follow as they move up the tray in the liquid-liquid dispersion. The equilibration trajectory is uh, curvilinear and does not follow the straight line pass dictated by a model that assumes that the components will transfer at the same rate. Indeed, the component efficiencies for, the, for NMP, blue line, Propyl benzene, red line, and tetradecane show that the uh, component efficiencies are all significantly different from one another. And noteworthily, the tetradecane efficiency has a negative value 
during the initial stages of equilibration. For the liquid-liquid mixture glycerol acetone water, the uh, model calculations using the uh, Geddes Maxwell Stefan um, description of a feed composition shown here, as it equilibrates to this composition, the uh, Blue line shows the calculated um, equilibration trajectory. This is curvilinear, and uh, they match the experimental data published in 1985 in the uh, standard group at the University of Manchester. The calculated component efficiencies are plotted here in this diagram as a function of the Fourier number, and we note that the uh, component efficiency of water exceeds unity for a uh, range of uh, contact times. And the uh, component efficiencies of the three uh, species are all unequal. So the message so far is uh, that uh, due to coupling effects, in um, molecular diffusion, the equilibration tra trajectory followed by bubbles of uh, vapor components, internal distillation, or liquid phase components in liquid liquid extraction. The, the trajectories follow serpentine paths in composition space. And do not follow the serpent, the uh, straight line um, trajectory anticipated by a model that assumes that the uh, component efficiencies of each species is the same. In other words, the uh, departures from straight line equilibration is to be attributed to differences in the uh, component efficiencies and the curvilinear equilibration paths may cross distillation boundaries. For liquid-liquid extraction, they may also enter the metastable regions and cause uh, emulsification. Let's uh, switch gears and move on to um, binary mixture absorption in zeolites. Let's consider the absorption of um, mixtures of nitrogen and methane in LTA for a zeolite. LTA stands for Linda type A. LTA for A consists of uh, cages of 11 angstrom in diameter and each cage is separated from adjacent cages by windows which have an aperture of 4 angstrom, hence the name 4A. In practice, for purification of natural gas, we need to uh, selectively remove nitrogen because the presence of nitrogen reduces the heating value of natural gas. In remote locations, pressure swing adsorption is used for the separation. And uh, we need an adsorbent that uh, selectively takes up nitrogen so that uh, purified uh, Methane can be rejected and recovered in the gaseous uh, phase. However, most known adsorbents selectively adsorb methane that has a significantly higher degree of polarizability than nitrogen. So the technological solution is to uh, resort to 
kinetic separations in which we rely on uh, separating the uh, binary mixture by relying on uh, the higher diffusivity of nitrogen within the pores of LTA4A zeolite. Now nitrogen is a pencil-like molecule whose cross-sectional dimension is 3.3 angstrom that is significantly smaller than the uh, diameter of the methane molecule. And uh, since the aperture is only 4 angstrom, the diffusivity of nit nitrogen is about 20 to 25 times larger than the diffusivity of methane. The higher diffusivity of nitrogen within the uh, pores of LTA4A leads to uh, a higher loading of nitrogen during the uh, transient approach to equilibration. Habgood in 1958 measured the transient uptake of a mixture of nitrogen and uh, methane within the pores of LTA4A. The uh, nitrogen uptake is shown by the um, red circles and the green squares are the uh, loadings of methane. Methane approaches its uh, equilibrium uh, loading in a monotonic manner, whereas nitrogen exhibits an overshoot in its loading as it uh, approaches its uh, equilibrium loading. The the attainment of supra-equilibrium loading during the, during the initial stages of the equilibration process is due to the significantly higher diffusivity of nitrogen. Indeed, the occurrence of uh, transient overshoots is essential for this uh, kinetically driven separation of nitrogen and uh, methane. Let's uh, replot this graph and um, calculate the component efficiencies. From the experimental data shown in the previous slide determined by uh, Habgood, we can determine the Murphy component efficiencies. The uh, red circles show the component efficiency for nitrogen and the green squares show the Murphy component efficiency for methane. We note that the uh, nitrogen component efficiency exceeds unity for a significant uh, range of uh, contact times during the equilibration process. Indeed, the attainment of supra-equilibrium loadings and component efficiencies greater than unity is an essential characteristic of the uh, kinetic separation of nitrogen and methane. The uh, solid lines are the uh, simulations of the transient uptake using the maxwell stefan model in which the component 3 is, a, is treated as uh, the zeolite, which is a pseudo species, D1 and D2 are the diffusivities of nitrogen and uh, methane within the zeolite. The solution of these uh, of the Maxwell Stefan uh, equations, along with the uh, model for transient uptake, leads to the uh, Continuous solid lines. The details are available in uh, in the published literature. See also my presentation on transient overshoots on my YouTube channel. We move on to transient uptake of uh, mixtures of carbon dioxide and ethane in DDR zeolite. DDR zeolite consists of uh, cages that are separated from adjacent cases by windows that have an aperture of 3.7 angstrom in this direction and 4.4 angstrom in this direction. 
CO2 being a um, thinner pencil-like molecule, hops between um, adjacent cages far more quickly than its partner ethane, which is much more severely constrained in the window regions. But ethane has a much stronger absorption strengths in DDR zeolite. So we have a combination of a more mobile molecule that is uh, relatively poorly absorbed and a tardier molecule that is more strongly absorbed. This combination leads to the possibility of kinetic separation and the transient uptake of mixtures of carbon dioxide and um, methane are shown here. The experimental data are shown uh, by the uh, red uh, circles and the green squares for CO2 and um, ethane respectively. And uh, the data of our three particular set of uh, compositions in the bulk vapor phase, a mixture with, with uh, 20 kilopascal each of CO2 and uh, ethane. Here we have um, 40 kilopascal of uh, CO2 in the bulk vapor phase, 20 kilopascal of uh, ethane in the vapor phase. Here we have uh, partial pressure of 60 kilopascal of carbon dioxide in the vapor phase and 20 kilopascal of ethane in the vapor phase. In all cases, we note that the uh, Murphy component efficiencies calculated from experimental data on transient uptake show values exceeding unity for CO2 during the initial transients before it finally reaches a value of unity. Um, when the uh, system is fully equilibrated. The continuous solid lines are the maxwell stefan model in which uh, the zeolite is treated as component three with pseudo species in the mixture. And um, we note that the uh, experimental data is very well reproduced in the maxwell stefan model. Further details are available on uh, my other presentations in, on the YouTube channel, which you may refer to. There are three takeaways uh, from this presentation. Firstly, Murphy component efficiencies for multi-component mixtures are unbounded. They may have values exceeding unity or lower than zero. We've analyzed uh, multi-component distillation, multi-component extraction, and uh, mixture adsorption in zeolites. In each of the examples we have uh, considered, we have the possibility of uphill transport and component efficiencies exceeding unity. We have compared experimental data with the uh, maxwell stefan uh, model to describe the equilibration trajectory. And in all cases, we note that uh, the equilibration process follows a scenic route or a curvilinear path to equilibration. And uh, following the scenic route to the equilibration, opens up new vistas as has been noted by William Wordsworth.